that I left all the other ones. Uh, but what happens, I think we experience this when we leave a company. The people we thought we'd stay in contact with at the company are often the people we don't because the only thing we had in common was being in the same company mm. together. So sometimes those things just naturally drift. And I think it's okay to let that go. We all go through seasons in life. And it's about surrounding ourselves with the people that can just just nourish us and and support us um, at whatever stage we're at. Absolutely. All right. So I want to shift gears a little bit. So um, when you're when we're going on this entrepreneurial journey, we have a lot of highs and lows. And I want to talk about celebrating the wins, whether they're small or large. Tell us about a time when you when. Or tell us about how you, if you have gotten to the point where you celebrate those wins and if you can just sort of walk us through a a small celebration or even a big celebration um, of yourself and the work that you've done when you got to the point where you were able to reflect on your own growth. Yeah. And and this is a great, I love this question because I, um, I, when I'm planning every year for the, the next business year ahead, I think about the person who started this business four and a half years ago. And I think in a good way, I'm unrecognizable to mm-hmm. myself, the, the sort of confidence and, and that sort of thing. So I think it's always worthwhile, not necessarily reflecting back, you know, on yesterday or the day before or what I could have done better or that sort of thing, but to think back about the person you were you know, when you started your business, when you started your job, when you started your career and acknowledge how much you've taken on and you've grown and you've coped with, I think that's really important. Um, a small win I want to share uh, is I've got lots of them. I've got big ones and small ones, but I want to share this one in particular because it was really early in my entrepreneurial journey. And I was standing in front of a room of 14 people. I'd been running, um, you know, one of my first ever workshops. And it was a free workshop and the whole idea was to invite them uh, to a paid event. Um, You know, for me, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't thousands of pounds. I think it might have been, um, you know, do a six week program with me for like 200 pounds or something. So it was it was really, you know, it was really small, but really big for me, because the thing for me was that I'd negotiated salaries and I'd negotiated contracts in corporate but I'd never, ever had to put a value on myself and stand Mm -hmm. in front of people and say, pay for me, pay for what I do. And it, you know, it freaked me out. I was so nervous. And I had a friend uh, who was sort of supporting me at this workshop, you know, doing a bit of admin and helping people and stuff like that. And um, she knew how nervous I was. And, you know, I got to the end and I sort of did my, my pitch about what people could do and all of that sort of thing. And um, then I said, you know, thanks for coming and all of that sort of thing. And, and you know, people were asking for feedback and all of that sort of thing. And then um, someone, one of the participants walked up to me and she said, can I ask you something? And I went, yeah. And she said, uh, were you really nervous about pitching? And I went, yeah, I was actually. <laughs> and she said, she said, I noticed it. She said, your energy changed completely. And it was such great feedback to hear. But here's the other thing that was about celebrating the win. So it wasn't about improving or listening to that. Everybody left the room and my friend ran up to me and she threw her arms around me and she said, you did it, you did it. You, we call it popped the cherry. You know, it was the first (laughs) time I had ever pitched myself and put a value on what I offered. And it's so confronting, I think, to do that, to kind of go, well, you know, maybe I'm worth that or maybe I'm worth that and just stand there and say, come and do this with me, it was a breakthrough. And I'm so glad that friend was there to remind me to celebrate it, to really honour it. So, you know, how you find that in your life um, and build that in, Uh, you know, I didn't think I'd built that in, but in retrospect, I kind of go, yeah. You know, it didn't, it almost, it was immaterial whether anyone signed up, that the thing to do was do it first, do it the first time. Yeah. And so, 
yeah, I still, it's still really visceral that moment when she came up and hugged me and said, you did it, you did it. That's <laughs> awesome. That's really awesome. Especially when you have someone in the room that's in your corner and they appreciate what you did and, and all of those things. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so uh, my next question has to do with how do you recharge yourself? How do you recharge your battery? People talk about balance. I don't know that that's such a thing, um, that there's really any such thing as balance. Um, I know what I like to, to consider it to be for me, but how do you make sure that you have the time to just take a, a pause and take a break and, and come back refreshed? Yeah, uh, this is actually being called a superpower of mine by a very good friend. <laughs> she says, um, one of the things is around setting boundaries and I don't, and what I mean is like working out all the pieces of your life that are important to nourish yourself. And I will put time in my diary to do that. So I have um, a, a number of structures, which I, I won't talk about, but they're on A3 sheets of paper and I have a planner and all of that sort of thing. I'm a writer. I like to scribble stuff down, but one of those columns is about well-being and play and it's about my health and all of that sort of thing, but it's about saying, well, what am I doing to play? You know, I've got a weekend coming up where I'm just going out to spend some time with a friend and her daughters and I've gone, I can't wait for that. And I, and I put that in, I look ahead and kind of go, I don't have any, I don't have much play going on for the next month. And so I create it and I put it in my diary. Uh, the other thing I have um, is uh, books. So I love to read. So one of the things that I do every night before I go to bed, I will always read before I go to bed. It's a real practice for me. And I will put time aside during the day to do some sort of just personal development reading. The third thing is for me is it might not sound like it, but I'm actually an introvert. I'm confident, but I am an introvert. So what's really important for me is to spend alone time so for example yesterday I had a a day where by the time one o'clock had come around I'd had six zoom calls now sometimes that happens but what I made sure I did was I blocked out time to go and decompress to go for a walk to so so there's a, there's a bit of planning I know that sometimes plans go awry but if you are not putting that kind of stuff in your bank, if you're not investing in nourishing yourself, you, you're not going to be any good to anybody as a coach, as a friend, as a parent, as a child, as, a, as someone who wants to contribute. You cannot, you cannot contribute from an empty cup. That's and right. I, you know, and I, I, I want to pick up on what you said about balance. I don't think it's about balance. It's about harmony, mm. about finding all the pieces that, that make you see other people like going and reading for an hour would they go oh yeah for me it's an absolute joy it's an absolute joy to go down to a local cafe I get a cup of nice cup of coffee and I go right this is play this is called reading my playbook the one I just want to read because I want to not the one because I'm learning and curious about something so you know give yourself permission to play and to put play into your days. That's a good one. That's a good one. I rarely hear anybody talking about play. And yeah. that's that just speaks to being present in that moment to me more than anything. Mm. And, and finding joy in the moments. Yes. You know, you know, how often do we do we really stand in the moment and capture the joy of it? Whether it's I love daffodils. So when the first daffodils come out you know, of the season, you know, there's something really hopeful and joyous about daffodils. And I'm all about just stop and celebrate the moments of joy, whatever they are. Yeah. I actually had an opportunity yesterday to do a little bit of play. One of my kids had a field trip and they went to a strawberry patch and it was an opportunity to do something in nature and just be outside all day, which 
I haven't done in a really long time. And it felt so good. And I found myself one more at one moment in the day, I actually looked up at the sky and, and held my arms out for yeah. just a moment, but it, it just felt so good. So mm -hmm. that's a great reminder. I was present yesterday and I haven't yeah. been a yeah. Yeah. Look, look for joy, honor those moments yeah. of joy. We're so busy um, fitting everything in and rushing and on our phones and, you know, with our children or whatever we're doing, right. you know, just like stop. It doesn't have to go so fast. Right. Right. Mm. So looking back on, you know, the progression of your journey, what advice would you have to someone who is considering being an entrepreneur, but maybe they're thinking about all the reasons not to do it or why they can't do it or why it doesn't make sense? What would you say to them? There are a lot of quotes and books about the regrets of the dying. And one of the, the biggest regret is, all, is not what I didn't do, uh, what I did do, it's what I didn't do. So, you know, regret regrets are about what you didn't do what have you got to lose by trying something out and learning as you go it, it is for me it's about living a life of possibility and potential um, what could be possible what uh, you know not what if something goes wrong what if it went right really what if it was amazing what you know who could you possibly be? You know, I said before, I, if someone had have said to me five years ago that I would be this portfolio entrepreneur, be doing the things I do, be living the, my life the way I do, you know, I would have laughed in their face. But I'm just, I love my life. And why I do what I do is because no matter how you choose to live it, I think you should love your life too. All right. So now I, I have a question that's not as, as heady, I guess. Okay. So <laughs> give me um, a guilty pleasure of Kim's. Oh, oh. <laughs> there are many, but we only have a short amount of time on this <laughs> podcast recording. Um, so one of my guilty pleasures is... Uh, this is an international audience, so you know some of the shows might not resonate. But so I love cooking telly, and I love things like um, I think you call it Dancing with the Stars in the US. So Strictly Come Dancing, um, Great British Bake Off, Dancing on Ice. I like that's my happy place. And if I've had a rubbish day, you know it's not you know oh I come home and meditate and I'll write in my gratitude journal and all of those. No, I want to park myself in front of a series of something or or great british bake off or strictly come dancing and i just i just want to feel good um and they are definitely my my guilty pleasures i'm not so much into reality tv in general mm -hmm. but those those shows there's something about people who kind of are trying something new trying something on having a go at something because let's face it, not everybody on Strictly Come Dancing comes to it with talent. Yes. Or, you know, <laughs> things like that. Um, and there are some true baking disasters in Great British Bake Off. So, you know, it, and, and it's not about the disasters. It's how they rise from it and how they take it on the chin and kind of say, well, that wasn't great. Pick myself up and go again. That's the kind of, that's my... Like I, I can feel my, um, I'm getting goose pimples, goosebumps, just talking oh, about this. Yeah. So, and that's, you know, when I've, particularly when I've had a really tough day, that's what I like to sit in front of. I curl up on the couch under a blanket and I walk, binge watch that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, I would say I like to do that sometimes too. So what is something, maybe something whimsical, it could be serious or whimsical, whimsical that people might be surprised to know about you um that's a great question something whimsical about me um
I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm thinking back to being a little kid, actually, and um, okay. I do love, I always remember um, I like to pretend to be other people. I loved, loved that as a kid. So, you know, I thought I might like to be, you know, an actor uh, for a while. So when I, you know, I'd, I'd went, gone through high school and was applying for all the university programs and that sort of thing and there was a particular one I wanted to do that was a uh, doing two degrees in four years so I have I did a psychology degree and a business degree with a major in marketing and oh. they yeah so they ran them at that point they didn't combine them so much you know I'm, you know this was in the you know the late 80s when when I studied and um I remember saying, and there were high points to get in. There were only, it was only a small cohort, a small acceptance cohort. And I remember saying, um, even though I had all these other preferences, because I think you could pick about 10 um, and it depended what points you got, what you could apply for. And I went, if it all goes wrong, I think I'm just going to like toss everything and go and train to be an actor. Yeah. And of course, everybody knows me as, you know, business and marketing and you know that's what I do that's my lane um but yeah would have tossed it all in and, and you know it's that regret thing I don't I don't want to live I don't want to ever look back in my life particularly when times are rubbish and say I should have mm. there are plenty of times we kind of go oh I could have been nicer or you know could have done things differently but I don't ever want to look back and say you know if only I'd move to London, if only I'd become an entrepreneur, if, you know, that if only is, is almost the thing that, that drives me. If there's a strong gut feeling, I go. Yeah. Wow. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right. So any last well, no, I'm not going to ask you. I was going to ask you if you have some words to leave us with, but I want to ask you, you've been at this for about four and a half years. Where do you see yourself in the next four and a half years? Oh, who knows? That's the joy of it. Yes. It's like, for me, that's the joy of it. You know, it again, it's that um, it's, it's being comfortable, um, not with uncertainty, but with building a life of possibility. Like you, you really don't know what's possible for yourself. Years ago, yeah, about twenty years ago now, uh, I did a a program, and the whole mantra of it was, anything is possible for yourself and your life through the program I did, and I I believe that I believe that anything is actually possible for ourselves and our lives um, is just being open and curious and willing to grow into it in ways you might not have ever expected you would. Nice, nice. All right. Thank you so much, Kim, for being with us today. I really enjoyed our conversation. I've enjoyed getting to know you. So thank you. Well, well thank you so much for having me. And, um, you know, I love talking about my journey because I've just learned so much about myself. So I hope your your listeners and viewers um you know take action on something don't yeah. wait but if only yeah likewise and yeah. so kim if someone wanted to reach out to you tell us um how they can find you what's the best way uh well i'm i'm one of these people who has a name she has to spell every time um <laughs> She asks. Uh, so uh, what you can do is Google me and then choose the platform you want to interact with me on. So um, my name is Kim with a Y. So K-Y-M. Uh, and then my surname is Hamer, H-A-M-E-R. If you, if you put that into almost any search platform, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, you'll, you'll find something about me. And um, I would love if you want to connect uh, let me know that you heard heard me uh, here talking to Anika today. Um, I would I would love to connect and hear from you. All right, thank you so much, Kim. My pleasure. All right, thank you.